He's the only one. <laughs> we have Bill and no one else. Good job. All right. So here's what I want you to do. Write this down. Six months has gone by. Write down six months have gone by. Write down six months have gone by. So then, therefore, how many months do we have left? Six months, right? Does that sound right? We have six months have gone by out of 12 months, then we probably have six months left. Okay. That's not quite the case. I want to do the math for you. Most transactions are taking how long to close today? 45 to 60 to 70 days, right? I would say it's probably closer to 60 days to actually get them done, get it taken care of. So let's put down two months to close, all right? Now, if you had a short sale and you took a short sale listing today, how long does it take generally to get it negotiated, get it moved on, and get that first escrow closed. Notice I said the word first escrow. Uh, <coughs> 60 to 90 days. 60 to two years, 60 to 90 days. So I wrote down here, I wrote down two months, okay? I wrote down two months. Now, hold that in the bands because that kind of, that's off to the side a little bit. So if I have six months to begin with, and I take two months away, because my deals have to be in escrow no later than about November, certainly November 10, I'm going to deduct two months from there. So what I really have left to work with is four months, right? Say yes. 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 OK, well, let's talk about that. Each month has about 20 work days. Each month has about 20 work days. So four months, 20 work days in each month. That means that we have, between now and the end of the year, 80 work days. 80 days that we're going to get up in the morning, we're going to go to work, we're going to sign contracts, we're going to write contracts, we're going to learn our listing presentation, we're going to role play, we're going to go get our listings, we're going to sell houses. 80 work days. Now, the 120 of you or so that will be going to the Superstar Retreat, subtract five from that. So now you have 75 work days that you have left. But you need to go to the Superstar Retreat to polish up your skills, to get yourself going. We all need that period of time so that we can really push hard at the end of the year. Now. Most of us are probably going to take, at least between now and the end of the year, another week vacation. Right? Say yes. Uh, it's already planned. I know. You just haven't told me. <laughs> so let's take another five days off. So now we're down to 70 work days between now and the end of the year. Now, let me ask you another question. Over the next four months, each of you will come to work every work day without fail. I get that, OK? Not one of you will fail in that. But will there, will there be a time that you'll show up to work, but your brain isn't with you? Is there ever a time where that happens, where you're there? No way. You're there, you're there, you're there. No way. But your brain isn't, it's a little foggy, maybe from the night before, maybe from the week before, maybe you didn't exercise enough, you know? Has there ever been that? So I wrote down here, so, so I wrote down, it, it's, is it unreasonable to say that that could happen to you two days a month? Two days. I don't think that's unreasonable. Out of a four-week month, two days, you're, you show up to work, but your brain's not there. You know, you're worried about an escrow. You're worried about a transaction. Something's falling out. You know, the spouse or significant other is not happy with you. Cash flow isn't where it's supposed to be. 
So you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing on that given day. So if, if you take my assumption, you'll take another eight days off, two days a month, four months, eight more days. So 80 minus 5 minus 5 minus 8 is 62 work days. 62 work days between now and the rest of the year. So the question is, I've made half my income in the first six months. It stands to reason I should be able to make, I should be able to double it in the next six months. Business is a little better. Listings are selling a little faster. Things are working a little bit easier. Transactions are coming together a little bit quicker. Buyers are pulling the trigger a little bit faster. Banks are actually approving some of our loans a little bit quicker. That's happening. That's really happening. So it's not unreasonable to assume that we should be able to double it. But how can we double it if we only have 62 work days to do it in? I have an idea. You don't think I would bring this to you without an idea, right? right. All right, here we go. So most of you have a few pendings that are probably going to close this year. Because of the hard work, focus, consistency that you have done, you have a few pendings. And because I have been hounding you like a dog every day, every week, every month, for the last two months, begging you to get a listing this month, you actually have two or three listings that are out there. One or two or three. Some of you have four or five. Interesting. Interesting. So here's the plan. Number one, write this down, or just go get a cup of coffee, whichever you prefer. <laughs> 62 days, ladies and gentlemen, 62 days. Hopefully, 62 days. Because some of you have a tendency of not doing what you're supposed to be doing when you do it, when you're supposed to do it. And if that's the case, it's going to be less than 62. Number one. Go back to all your leads, all the appointments that you've had for the last two years, and call them back and tell them <coughs> about the marketplace. Use the hot market script on them. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to give you a call back today. I want to let you know that in Glendora, I don't know if you knew this or not, that 48 houses actually closed escrow last month. And 14 of those closed for list price and above. Did you guys know that? Oh, I had no idea. I thought the market was still bad. Exactly. And we know when that starts to happen, you go right into your script. Every single person. Find your old day planners. Go into the glove box in the car where you threw all the leads. OK? Go into the console. OK, I was looking through mine today, found a couple names in there and phone numbers. OK? Look in your consoles. Look in your pockets. Ladies, go back to the purses, not the one you're wearing, the one you changed from over the last three months, four months. Uh, it's amazing. I, I cannot believe it. My wife changes a purse and leaves everything in it, and it's like a whole new thing going on here. <laughs> you know? You want to find money? Go back about three months. There's about 20 bucks there. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I've never seen anything quite like it. <coughs> Use the hot market script on them. Get out there. Do that right now. I wrote down here, prospect like a dog for the next 62 days. More intense, more focused than you have ever done. Do five, five, tens every day for the 62 days. Five, five, ten, five previews, five expires. 10 doors around each one. You will make money. I think I told you guys this last week. 20 of the last 30 listings that we've gotten in the company have come directly or indirectly from the doors and the phone follow-up that you guys are doing. That's where the money is. It's absolutely out there. I wrote, up, I wrote down here, 
Get a lead, follow it up like crazy. Call them, drop them a note, go by and see them. Do more follow-up in the next 62 days than you've ever done in your career. Question. In the last 60 days, how many leads have you lost? How many deals have you lost from under following up? How many deals in the last 60 days have you lost from under following up? Every single one of you has at least one. I'll bet you, you have two or three. Here's a question. How many leads have you lost in the last 60 days from over following up? Mostly none. I actually talked to a gal on Friday who the client said, you're killing me back off, I won't do business with you. But she also took six listings this month. One doesn't like her, six do. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. But what do we focus on? The one that said they don't like you. The one that said you're pushing too hard. You got to remind yourself, six or one, which is better? I wrote down here, you got to call them back. You got to call them back again. You got to call them back again. You have to go visit them. You worried about what to say and how to say it? I got a really simple program for you. Real simple, real estate agents. Before you call the client back, go in the MLS, see if in their neighborhood anything was listed or sold since the last time you talked with them. Now what are the odds in their general neighborhood that something got listed or something got sold or went pending in their general neighborhood? Good or bad? In this marketplace, pretty darn terrific. All you do is call them up. Mr. and Mrs. Jones just wanted to let you know, since the last time I talked to you yesterday, uh, <laughs> one more house just came up on the market. It's a bit, few blocks further away, and it isn't quite as big as yours, but it came on the market and it's listed for X, Y, and Z. I just wanted to let you know. By the way, has anything changed in your life? Are you ready to list or sell your house? What's going on? Simple, give information, then you can ask for the lead. You can ask for the deal. All of us can do that in any city, anywhere. If you run out of something that's close, give the information for the city. Did you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, that yesterday, three houses closed in Glendora? Did you know that yesterday, five houses got listed in West Covina? Five houses, yeah, things are happening, absolutely. Do you get what I'm saying here? This is all about follow-up. I wrote down here, Continue to probe for reasons why they are moving. Continue to probe for reasons why they are moving. Find the reason they're moving and keep pushing that button. I wrote down here, we're running into a situation with no inventory, right? Say yes. Yes. Low inventory. You know what's just kind of neat? Our office, and I really think because I'm just bugging you to get listings, is last month we took 125 listings, this month we took 127 listings. That doesn't sound like a dramatic increase. However, if you compare it to the Board of Realtors, every month the board is selling 500 listings. The board's inventory is dropping in excess of 500 listings a month, and you guys are holding your own and rising slightly. Think about that. The inventory is dropping dramatically, and you're getting the business. Why? because you're out there doing it. If the only reason is to get me off your back, that's okay. It's okay. You're not laughing. Well, I'm not getting off, don't worry about it. I wrote down here, no inventory. So, the veterans get this, but sometimes the new agents that have been around Look, if you came in the business since 2006, 2007, you have never worked this kind of a market. This market is different. The difference in this market is you've got to move fast, really, really fast. So get it right. We were talking about this this morning with Marilyn and making sure your contracts are right. Move fast, but make sure you're doing it right. But you do not 
have to take, you do not have to take a listing, nor do you have to wait for a listing is taken before you can go out and try to put a transaction together on that house. Do you get what I'm saying? You find a lead, you're out door knocking. Somebody says they might be interested in selling. You do a little pre-qualifying with them. They're just not ready to list yet. They're just not ready to, to put it on the market yet. They're not ready to put a sign in front of the house yet. But they're almost there. We're right there. So some agents keep going back trying to get a signed listing so they can put in the other in the MLS so the other rest of the agents can sell the property. Here's what I suggest. You get the lead, you go out and find a buyer. Get a one party show on the house, go out and bring an offer to the to the client. Doesn't even hit the MLS. Do you guys get this? Perfectly legal, perfectly comfortable. You haven't listed a house and then held it in your pocket. This is how we have to do business today. If you don't have a listing, if you don't have, if you don't have a listing, Pierre, but Debbie does, and you guys are chatting about it, it's not her listing yet, but she knows about this pro property. You say, wow. So you, Pierre goes with Debbie. They take the buyer. They get a one-party show on your buyer. You guys do the deal. You split the commission. Everything is fine. You don't have to wait until the property is listed for sale. Do you get this? This side does. This side's not getting it yet. I'm worried. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. All right? Which is exactly another reason why you need to be out prospecting on the streets talking to people. You will not find your next transaction sitting here in the office. Unless, of course, you're on the phone calling 100 people. If you're not, get out of the office, go out and meet the people. We are in, write this down, a meet the people business. We are in a meet the people business, period. End of conversation, number one. Number two, if you don't have an appointment in this business, you can't make any money. No, no appointment, no money. No appointment, no money. So if you didn't have any appointments this week, lenders, realtors, doesn't matter. If you didn't have an appointment this week, this week you made nothing. Get that through your head. Now is the time, the next six months, to get this done. But we don't really have a full six months. We have 62 work days. We have 62 work days. I wrote down here, get aggressive, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Then do it again. Get aggressive, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Then do it again. Get aggressive. Be aggressive, stay aggressive. So there's three types of agents. Draw a line. There's three types of agents. So who's going to do this, right? It's a lot of work. It's hot outside. It's even hot right here. <laughs> there's three types of agents. And not necessarily in any particular order. There's the agents that want to do it, but don't go do it. There's agents that have to do it and are out doing what they need to do every day, every week, every month. Then they repeat themselves every day, every week, every month. Every month. Then there's the agents who can't do it now. They're actually from the agents that I first mentioned, which are the ones that want to do it, but don't do it. They want to do it, but they don't do it because they didn't do what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it. So here's what happens. They don't have any leads. They don't have any leads to follow up on. You're supposed to. You want to, but you don't do it. They don't have leads, they can't turn those leads into an appointment. Remember what I said, no appointment, no money. 
no money, then you have to stay home watching the kids because you can't afford childcare. Hear what I'm saying. I'm dead serious on this. You are where you are because it's OK with you. Because if it wasn't OK with you, you would say, that's it. I'm changing now. The reason you don't is because it's still OK. At some level, somewhere. No money, you have to stay home with the kids. No money, no gas. No gas, you can't go preview. You can't go preview, you don't know what's on the market. You don't know what's on the market when a client comes in and they say, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, willing, and able to buy. And because this market is so fast right now, you can't move out fast enough. You're behind the curve rather than ahead of the curve. You have no money when an emergency comes up. You have to cancel going to a Mike Ferry event. You have to cancel going to join the board. You have to cancel continuing education. You can't afford to renew your license. All because you didn't do what you were supposed to do when you were supposed to do it. Three types of agents. One that has to. They have to. No question. One that would like to, but doesn't do it. And those are the ones in the danger zone. Those are the ones in the danger zone. Because if they don't do it, this is where they will fall into. And ladies and gentlemen, I personally know agents that are in that situation right now. They don't have the money for gas. They don't have the money for childcare because they didn't do what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it. Don't you dare be one of them, not on my watch. I wrote down here, Today matters. What activities will you do today, right now? Who will you call? What doors will you knock? What scripts will you learn? Who will you follow up with? And who will you follow up with with intensity? What properties are you going to preview? You are where you are because it's OK with you. It's your choice. You can stay like that, or you can change. I think we should go out and make this our best week ever. Thank you.